Greetings everyone, welcome back to another episode of Bite Size History on History with Audrey D. Today's episode is a side note because it is St. Patrick's Day and as such we tend to celebrate all things green. Now by we I'm actually referring to here in the US where we tend to have a number of St. Patrick's Day celebrations. And in honor of St. Patrick's Day, I decided to do a origin story of St. Patrick and his day and the evolution of St. Patrick's Day over the ages. If you like bite-sized history and history with Audrey D so far, please make sure you are liking and subscribing to this channel. Also, you can find me on TikTok and Instagram as History with Audrey D. And you can support this channel through Patreon on History as Audrey D as well. Well, St. Patrick's Day is celebrated every March 17th, and the reason for this is that it is believed St. Patrick died on March 17th, sometime in the 5th century. And therefore, Ireland commemorated this day as St. Patrick's Day. It was traditionally celebrated as a religious holiday, during which you would go to church in the morning and celebrate in the afternoon. The traditional food would be bacon and cabbage. We see that it has certainly evolved from that, especially here in the US. And that's what we're gonna focus on as well in this episode. At the age of 16, St. Patrick was kidnapped by a band of Irish raiders and taken to Ireland where he was forced into slavery. After being a sheep herder for six long years, he had a dream that said that his ship was ready for him to be able to escape on. So he fled that night from his captors and his master and made passage on this ship, which eventually took him back home to his family in Britain. Along the way, he did face another captivity as well as near starvation. Well, St. Patrick became the patron saint of Ireland because he had another dream in which he read a letter called The Voice of the Irish. It moved him so much to eventually return to Ireland. Although he never truly felt as though he was ready, he put his faith in his God and chose to venture the seas and back to the Irish people, where he began to convert them to Christianity. St. Patrick faced many dangers and potential martyrdom, which means to die for your cause, in this process. However, he was successful in his mission. St. Patrick wrote his Confessio, in which he details his life and we learn more about his personality. He did die in Saul, the place of his very first church, on March 17th in the 5th century CE. St. Patrick is also known for a number of legends, one of which being the most common of him driving the snakes from Ireland and into the sea where they met their demise. Now, another legend is that he raised a number of people from the dead. The last legend we're going to discuss is actually of the shamrock. Now, St. Patrick uses a shamrock in order to explain to an unbeliever how three entities the Holy Trinity can exist within one being. And he does this by showing the three petals of the shamrock and the single stalk. And we are on to St. Patrick's Day itself. Now we discussed that in Ireland, St. Patrick's Day was traditionally a religious holiday. And if you go to Ireland now, it's most likely not celebrated in most locations the way we think St. Patrick's Day should be celebrated in the U.S. So we are going to be discussing St. Patrick's Day in the U.S. and some of the traditions of how they got started. While the holiday has been observed in Ireland as a Roman Catholic feast day since the 9th or 10th century, there are a number of different traditions that have been established in the United States. The first St. Patrick's Day parade in America is actually believed to have been held on March 17th, 1601 in what is now St. Augustine, Florida. The New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade, as we know it today, actually gained its size in 1848, when several of the Irish Aid Societies in New York joined the parades together. 
It is the oldest civilian St. Patrick's Day parade in the world and the largest in the United States. Now, when the Irish came over to the United States, it was very difficult to actually find pork. And that is where the tradition of corned beef and cabbage comes from. It most likely is because they could find corned beef available, but they were unable to find pork. Now, another part of the traditions that we have come to acknowledge, aside from parades, are cities like Chicago that dye their river green. We also see people drinking an enormous quantity of green beer and a number of different varieties of foods. So foods that still get eaten today are Irish soda bread. We also tend to eat a great amount of corned beef and cabbage. There are a number of minty drinks and grasshopper pies that will also be consumed on this day because they are specifically green. And we know that there are a franchise of shakes known as the Shamrock Shake that still comes out every year around this time. And that is where we get the majority of our traditions for St. Patrick's Day. Well, there you have it. That is the history and origin of St. Patrick's Day, St. Patrick, and its evolution over the years. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please make sure that you are hitting that like and subscribe button. Also, make sure that you find me on Instagram and TikTok as History with Audrey D. And you can find me on Patreon as History with Audrey D as well. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope you have a fantastic St. Patrick's Day. Enjoy the spring season, and I will see you in our next lesson.